Hey, what's up, garden friends? If you're a tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I'm giggling because, like, the second I hit record, the leaf blowers and <laughs> it just. Come on. It's all right. It's what it is. I'm outside. And I am getting ready to pot up some gingers from last year. These are curcumas. These are little corms from my curcuma. This is the Ban, Ban Rai Red doesn't want to focus these got really dry over the winter time now usually when i store these i keep them in their pot and i just cut the foliage off and i stick them someplace dark and cool and then i move them back out when it gets warm start watering and they come back the way i did things with my caladiums and everything last year i decided to go ahead and just let those go with the caladiums i cut them back and stored them with the clay i'm gonna i'll come this, that, that's too loud i'll be right back Okay, that's a little bit better. I got nervous. He was out in the middle of his lawn with the weed whacker, and I was like, no, no, please don't be weed whacking your entire lawn. That's not, that's going to take a long time. That's not how to do things. So anyways, I'm just taking these corms and just going to stick them in these pots for right now. I'm doing the same thing with my cannas, and I did a crinum lily. I can show you. I'm just going to barely cover the top of these with some soil and uh, water them in. They should be okay. But yeah, I soaked them because they were feeling like they had lost some of their firmness. They weren't squishy, which is good, but they also felt like they could have been a little bit hollow. Did, however, they started to soak up the water. I soaked them for like 20 minutes and that's about it. And then this way I'm not going to have to water them in quite as heavily because they'll them using moist soil. They've been moistened. It's not just a matter of letting them wake up. I'm still going to water them in. But won't have to do it as heavily. The weather this week is going to be really weird. Like today, it's I think gonna be like 86 or something like that. And then it's supposed to just like drop back into 50s and 60s. They're even seeing some lows later in the week of like 42. So uh, I'm starting things in pots. Like that's what's happening over here because I'm just, I'm tired. Like I can't wait any longer. I need to get these things going even if the weather's not behaving. So. Curcuma there, canna's over here. We got a crinum lily going over here. This is the purple, the Asiatica. And it's just, I just dig it up in the fall and clean it off and stick it in a box and then bring it back out and get it going again. Those will be going in the ground. Like this is not, none of this is permanent. Yeah, not permanent at all. This is just getting things going. They'll only be in these pots for like a week or two. And you can see, I'm just barely covering the tops of the rhizomes. Can you even see that? I can't see my viewfinder, it's very sunny. But yeah, just very lightly covering the tops here. How about that? Can we see that? There we go. Just enough to cover it up. These pots are small, so this isn't something I would keep the cannas in, like period. It's way, way, way too small. But just for a couple weeks to help wake them up and get them going, that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to finish up that. I have a lot of gingers and things and can as this there's a going to be a lot of pots spread around here for a couple weeks but that's okay worth it to go ahead and get a jump start on things and get things moving finally yep that's a lot of pots but that's okay like i said it's only for a couple weeks and they'll be going in the ground it won't even matter anymore and i still have a few gingers left this is another curcuma it is sweet memory it has like a wider flower on it and they're very pretty yeah on a different note here not that anything needs to be consistent, it's a vlog. These pots that they've been putting out with the flat sides, I haven't really decided how much I like them because it's a pain if you're loading up a big like 12 pack to always make sure they're positioned correctly, but they are very useful for scooping soil. I have been getting a lot of use out of these um, wave petunia containers here because they're flat and they're stiff so you can scoop up very quickly. I actually put a little bit too much soil in there. I don't want them to be too deep. I can add more soil once I see some signs of life, but until then I want to make sure that they're not too deep. Like just barely above the top there. I was not looking at my viewfinder. I apologize if none of that was in frame. And then here is just there. Water. There we go. Water for everybody. Good thing I saved some of that soil because that's not enough. There we go. Add a little bit more just to cover the tops there. Don't want those to dry out. Gingers do not like to dry out. So now and all I have left are these elephant ears and I got a little bit lazy. I'm just going to put two in each pot. It's fine. Like I said, they're going to be going in the ground. The gingers won't be, but the elephant ears will. So this is just to get them going. Like, look at my wonderful handwriting. I like to hold on to the proven winners pots or just any white pot in general because I can just 
use a sharpie and label them it's easier than have to stick with labels but yeah it's not i can tell what it says don't worry about it that's all that matters oh and then things like the gingers right there the curcuma it's just a pot it's hard to see it these will only sit in the sun until i see signs of movement like as soon as i see green starting to come up out of the surface of that soil they'll be going to some place where they just get morning light filtered light throughout the rest of the day they this particular type of ginger isn't going to want really 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 strong sun but right now all these no matter whether they like sun or not since they're beneath the soil they can sit out in the sun that's going to warm up their roots and tell them hey it's time to get going kind of speeds the process up a little bit the curcumas go into decorative pots the cannas i have varying ideas of where i'd like to put them things are still kind of up in the air right now it's kind of waiting to see what happens um socially like if things will get to a point where i can go out to the nursery it's going to change my plans for the garden a little bit as far as being able to get perennial shrubbery and those sorts of things so it's just kind of a waiting game over the next couple weeks but there's plenty to do out here not a shortage of stuff to work with that's for sure so i'm just i don't know i don't know what to do now and just like all the other vlogs lately i don't exactly have a plan for this week just kind of checking things off the list little things here and there might dig up some bananas i don't know divide them up this would be the time to do it because i've been contemplating maybe sticking a banana up here that is my native garden it's not all natives but it's mostly where i keep my natives and all my pollinators up there they're still sleeping and then there's still some that need to be planted right there but just like i think it would look so cool to have a big banana up here too but I got to think about that because it would have to go in just the right spot to not shade things. I know that's a weird spot for a garden, but uh, it's like one of the few spots that gets enough light for a lot of the plants that I grow for the pollinators. The Asclepius and all those various things. Hey, good morning, Colby. She was banging at the door. She's like, um, excuse me, it is a gorgeous day. Would you let me outside? I know the lighting's terrible. This, there's not a cloud in the sky, so it just you can just bear with me. I've played with different settings, and it doesn't really seem to make a difference when the sun's this strong. I'm not going to point the camera at the sun. That seems like a bad idea. All right, you all warmed up? Time to start cruising. It's about time. I've been sitting out here for like a good, well, 15 minutes. That's actually not that long. I'm going to go ahead and find her some food and throw it down so she can wander and munch a little bit. And then, uh, I don't know, like I said, it's really toasty today which is nice, but since it's supposed to be in the 50s and 60s the rest of the week, it seems like that would be the smart time for intensive labor. Trying to make the most out of the inconsistent weather. At least I can get lots of little things done on this nice warm day and still take advantage of the cool weather, even though I'd rather it not be cool. But hey, that's a good time to get digging and stuff like that done. Anything that would require, you know, breaking much of a sweat. I mean, I'm down for breaking it. You get what I'm saying. There we go. Got some nice hibiscus, some hibiscus leaves. Now I'll get you some lettuce and some tortoise food. It, welcome to a day and a half later. Colby did not finish those hibiscus. A lot of noise when I was working on things out here the other day, so I figured I'd just take a break from filming and get some editing done and some other things. And uh, I've been out here working on but the, you see this right here. In the last vlog, I talked about how I wanted to get this tree out of here. It's a Japanese bitter orange. It's not, like, not that I don't like the tree. It's a beautiful tree, but it has shifted forward. The whole berm's kind of shifted forward over the years. It's very dangerous, a very dangerous plant to have around. And it was going to have to be moved to get this magnolia out of here. That was, I don't know, there's um, siding and roofing repair going on behind me. That may have sounded like a fart. It wasn't, I promise. So here's how I've been going about getting this out of here. I put a bungee cord around the plant, a cardboard box, because it's just these spines, the thorns. Not only are they really long on the plant, but a lot of them are hooked. And if that were to get you in the eye, you could sit bye bye eyeball. That's not worth it to me. That's not worth the risk. So uh, that's why it's all bundled up like this. And as I've been working on getting the roots dug out and everything, I've been coming over and pulling it. I've got a rope on here, as you can see, so I can maneuver it around a little bit so that I can work on those roots some more. I uh, usually prefer to get a gigantic section of roots when digging up a tree or a shrub but there's drainage right here and then the magnolia is right there 
So that's about as far as over as I could dig right there. There's drainage on top of the berm and there is an electrical or it's a cable. I'm not sure, but I found it when I was digging right through here. So that's about as wide as I can go. So I'm going to finish getting this out of here and I will pot it up and probably have to give it, I mean, we'll go through all that when I do it, but I figured I should at least mention what's happening here. That was another cardboard box down here. All kinds of weird sounds happening. But yeah, I didn't want to just dig this up and have it be gone and not have like talked about it at all. So at least the process. So that's what's going on there. And that once that's out, the tree people, if anybody will ever return my calls and emails, can come out and get this magnolia out of there and then can start working on this. I'll have somewhat of a blank canvas. This was just something I needed to get going on right now because lots of little guys are coming up. There's little kalakajas popping up all over the place. It'll be a lot harder working with that in the area when there's plants everywhere that I have to step around. And like I said, I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. They're popping up all over the place. So that's where things are right now. Hopefully the next clip will be me with this thing on the ground, giving it a cut back and getting ready to pot it up. Hey, look at that. Whew. It's like 30 seconds later. You are working on a project and then you just kind of hit a spot where you're like, this got really hard and I don't want to do it anymore. But then you're just like, well, actually, maybe I just should try harder. That kind of happened here. <laughs> I took like a 10 minute break from this because there was just one route. I was being really stubborn. And then I went back over and I just like tried harder. And there we go. That's done. So now I'm just going to take my pruners here and I'm going to cut this back by... I don't know, at least 40%, maybe 50%. Because I wasn't able to get a huge chunk of roots out with this plant, so I don't want to have too much foliage on here for the plant to have to support. Unfortunately, these aren't a plant that I've been able to find much on when it comes to propagating uh, the cuttings, hardwood or softwood. So I don't think I'm really... I, that, that would be nice to be able to root them up and give them away or something like that, but it's not looking like that's going to be an option. I'll give it a shot, but I'm not going to pour a ton of effort into it because like I said, I don't, don't know what the success rate is. Usually this type of citrus, there's a debate around whether or not it should even be classified as a citrus, but this plant, the Poncerus, the Trifoliata, this is often used for like rootstock because it's really cold hardy, but there's not a ton of info out there on like actually just rooting the cuttings other than just like how you would generally do things with citrus, which has, you know, kind of mixed results with the different methods. There's, you know, different varying levels of success. Uh, I'm procrastinating. I don't want to stick my arms in here and cut this thing up. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it looks great, doesn't it? Eh, it's not the best, but you can see here that like barely fit in this pot. These are 30 gallon containers. You can see there that really filled out that pot quite a bit. These are 30 gallon containers. I got as much of those roots out as I could, but this is, that's the best I could do. Should be okay. And I need to get this off the patio now. That was, that was a tricky thing to pull off, but I got it done. I, think I will probably just for right now, go ahead and poke this poke it. I'll drop it back here. It's a sheltered area and it's an area that I've been doing a lot of cleanup in. It's just overrun with these, I think they're lace vines and uh, I've been <laughs> spraying them down with a vinegar solution and getting them killed back because when I pull them, that, that doesn't work. They are really, really strong vines and you can break them off right at the soil surface. They'll snap right there very easily, but uh, getting the roots up, not always as easy, partially because the ground over here is very, very compacted. So for now, I'm just going to scoot this back here. This is a whole area that I would like to get redone this year. I mean, basically for like the entire garden, but everything's up in the air. So for now, I'm just going to try and keep it tidy. Now the magnolia can be removed professionally. I no longer have anything hiding my big pots and trough back there. So I'm going to have to figure out something else to do with those, but that's okay. Because I mean, like, I really should figure out something else to do with those anyways. Now I just have to, the, how am I going to... How am I gonna do? Well, I probably I'm thinking I probably should have just potted this up when I like had it in place there. But it's one of those things where it's, it's just those thorns. They're so big. I didn't want to move around any more than I had to. But I would think that when I move this, the whole thing's gonna. Uh, I don't know. I'll get it done. I don't hate it. I wouldn't leave it in this nursery can. But I had thought about maybe putting it back here and keeping it over here. 
I don't know yet. I don't want to do anything major here until that situation's been handled because there'll be machines and things doing stuff. I'm giving this a really heavy soak right now. I made sure to put a layer of mulch on top of this. It's really critical. It's crucial that this soil that this is potted up in, that that doesn't dry out. It needs to stay moist until there's some buds and some action going on from up above because chances are a lot of this is going to welt out and start looking and it already is it's not focused but just take my word for it it's a it's gonna be a pretty sad plant here for a little while but i think it'll be okay see if i can this is dumb don't do this don't use your camera hand to turn your hose off that's not smart uh you don't want to get water on the camera and just destroy it yeah and that's another reason this had to get done not just because i didn't want to trample all the stuff that's emerging not just because the magnolia it needed to be moved anyways because everything has drifted forward slid forward and you know just erosion over time so it didn't fit there in that spot anymore and uh there's something to do before temperatures get too extreme which i mean we have like i don't know maybe three weeks of mild temperatures maybe a month this i don't know things are really weird right now uh, they're predicting it might get down to like 38 maybe even 37 on friday which is just nuts for this time of year that would be i think may 9th 10th 11th 11th is mother's day no it's not the 10th yeah i don't know like may 8th or may 9th it's supposed to get pretty cold like i said at the beginning of the vlog what a good opportunity have a week of cool temperatures make the most of it and get some like hard labor done like digging up a tree there's an azalea here that needs to go that died off last year from the thickness of the magnolia all that sooty mold falling on it i kept it as clean as i could but that's one of the things i talked about with this magnolia was that it just made more sense for it to go than to try and save it because everything i would have to do to try and save the tree would have the most damaging impacts on the environment even if i'm using the safest products out there like neem whatever you want to use for smothering scale it still would drift because it's such a big tree and can land on things that can affect the pollinators and all kinds of things so just like you know what it's just got to go uh, especially because everything that i was told from the arborist about treatment with that magnolia scale it's like very low success rate unless you just go with hard chemicals which i didn't want to do so that's done things are happening and that's why you don't keep diseased trees around because they affect everything around them so now that azalea is dead too so that's got to go and i don't know what to do about the bamboo because i really like it but i would rather it not grow right there it's time to think about all these things i'm not too worried about it i did just realize i got to get this bungee cord out of here because that's what was holding this queen palm from falling over and I, it's going to start storming here very soon they're saying they're gonna be really bad storms so i don't want the wind to blow this over and then i don't have any but ideally i would throw some stakes in the ground around this and tie this to the stakes hold it steady because not only is it important that the soil stays consistently moist but it's also really important that there's not a lot of movement because they have to re-establish themselves those roots need to set themselves back down and re-anchor themselves hopefully i'll get it planted in not too long it's not ideal to go from the ground to a pot back into the ground with only a few weeks but otherwise i'll have to leave in this pot for a long time and i don't feel like digging a hole big enough for a 30 gallon container if this roots out in the whole thing no 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 no. that's i don't want to do that especially if i end up keeping it over here that would be just a total disaster i don't want to do that so there's the update with the orange finally got that done i can check that off my list i'm gonna go back there and work on those lace vines a little bit more and get this tied up and now oh, it's gonna rain for a couple days so we'll just see what happens just hang out inside and play with the animals i don't know oh my gosh you guys i have like 45 minutes of vlog that i just filmed in slow motion all because of this
rookie mistake. Whenever you film in slow-mo, switch it back right afterwards. Oh, I'm so mad at myself right now. Well, I spent some time talking about how I need to get the pool cleaned up, and then I cleaned it. It's dirty again because birch trees are messy, which I also went on like a three-minute rant about, and then showed you how disgusting things were in there. Looked for Emilio Estevez. He wasn't in there. Cleaned the pool some more, put a little bit of shock in there because these grackle birds drop these little poop pouches in there when they have their babies, so that's disgusting, and the water's not warm enough for the salt system to run. That's been what I've been working on, and then Toby, Toby, come here. Come here, Toby. And then Toby got in trouble because he broke the rules. I put him inside before I shocked the pool and I went and did some things inside. And then Toby went flying out the door and we have a rule here. You don't go out the door unless you're given permission to or unless the human goes first and then they have to wait. It's a thing you teach them for impulse control. Then, then you don't have to worry about dogs that dart out the door and run away. He knows better. Uh, it's not something I reinforce often anymore because it, he's something he's learned since he was a puppy. But, um gotta keep up on those things so that was my bad he rushed out the door and jumped right in the pool after i had shocked it so he got pulled out and hosed off he's okay it was just a little dose of shock and then uh, i went over and like went through the pool pumps and everything and showed y'all what i do with those to clean the pool that's all gone now talked about how i need to get this pool cleaner set up even though it usually doesn't work when it does work it's fantastic and got it set up and then found out that the pump that runs this is broken so that's great it's not that big a deal it's usually just like you remove some bolts and grease some things that's fixable probably and then i gave an update with this guy and talked about how i <laughs> am seeing some relief uh, i'm feeling a little bit of relief with it because it was really wilty this morning and i gave it a drink and it started to perk back up i mean i know it still looks kind of wilty there will probably be some dieback on it but just the fact that it showed a response to being watered is a very good sign so i'm making sure that this pot stays very moist and then i did some more work with the weeds so frustrated i lost all that foliage foliage <laughs> i was still thinking about this guy over here the footage so much video is gone. And I talked about the weather. They're saying it's going to get down to 34 now instead of 37. So that's problematic because, you know, tropical plants everywhere. I'll handle that tomorrow though when I need to. And then talked about the electricity, which I've talked about before, how that outlet doesn't work, but I have this fountain that you just, that one running through an extension cord and how I need to get this cleaned out and pulled some planters out of it. Started getting it cleaned up as best as I could. That's looking a lot better. I think everything that's left in there is just some sediment, like a ball of soil that I can scoop out with a fine mesh net, hopefully. Uh, but the whole point was that I need to get power to these pumps because I, this needs to be up and running for when I move the fish out. When I move the fish out, I uh, take about 50% of the water that's in that little pool pond in my garage and use that in here with the same filter and filter pads and everything. So it's pretty much cycled. It's equivalent to doing like a 50% water change. I just kind of wait for the temperatures to stabilize a little bit and then I bring the fish right out. Speed things up a lot. I just pump the water out here, but I need to get this power situation handled. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know why some days there's power here and some days there aren't, even when there's like nothing tripped. I don't know, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, I think we're caught up. I need to move those plants. Those are in Tucker's way. I have to move them anyways. They're gonna go inside tomorrow night. So I have this little, outlet adapter thingy here and i'm thinking i can use this to get things running it's got five little ports on it and then the prongs right there it's a little like octopus but pentapus i don't know so i'm not counting the outie part only counting the any parts i also have this socket box over here which i learned after i got it really just a rubbermaid container that's overpriced it has these clips on the sides here that are pretty sturdy and hard to get off with one hand you got your electronics in there so they're safe from the weather so i'm thinking i can put this in here run that extension cord over to it and get everything lined up over here that should do the trick because this fountain also needs to be running because again don't want stagnant water around. I think that that should solve the problem. I don't know. The power seems to be working. That fountain's running. This fountain is running. The only thing I couldn't hook up was the fan because it has a ridiculously short cord. So that was pretty easy. Problem not solved, but postponed because the actual problem is whatever's going on with that electrical outlet over there. I don't know. The wire somewhere along what's in the ground must be split. That's the only thing I can figure. 
because it doesn't make sense why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like maybe sometimes it make con it's making contact and sometimes it's not. I'm not an electrician. That seems dangerous though too. Can't that cause arcing? I feel like that's not a good thing. But I've also just created this catastrophe in my head. I really don't know what the problem is. Being a good helper, Tucker. Yeah, you good boy, Tuck. Yes, you are. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's gonna be freezing tomorrow, so enjoy it while you can. Uh, he's a lab. Labradors, they like the cold. He, like, flourishes during the winter time. And this is halfway full, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. I'm not moving the fish out right now. I don't remember what I've said earlier in the vlog versus right now because of all the wacky footage being all over the place. I also filmed two other videos, so if there's not a Thursday video, which there probably won't be. This is why, because I filmed it in slow motion like a dum-dum. I just pulled that hose out and put these cinder blocks in here to set the plants on and realized there's not enough water. So, I had to put those back in. Is that a fun story? Probably not. Now, usually there's a shelf in here that I have everything on, but that's in the other pond right now. So that'll come out when I bring the filter out. So for right now, this will do just to set the aquatic planters on. It does need a little bit more surface pruning and cleanup, but that's easy enough to do. There's this papyrus back here left over from last year, which, you know, sometimes those are good through zone seven and we had a mild winter. So I was thinking it may have made it through, but it's not looking like it. Temperatures have been pretty mild though. So, I mean, there's still a chance, but probably not. I didn't really make any kinds of efforts in any way, shape or form to protect this planter, I just made sure it stayed wet, which wasn't that hard to do. Yeah, that should be good enough. I'll pull this out of here. This is a little canna rhizome, which I'm still waiting on because it actually is still a little bit firm. So it might still bounce back. I'm not positive, but if it doesn't, I'll put a different canna in here. That's fine. I don't want to rip it out when I'm not positive. There's some mush in the old growth, but that's normal. And then this is just, it's a miniature cattail. These not much to say other than they're very easy to grow. Super hardy plants. Hardy and vigorous and it's overall very simple pond plants. That's good enough. The water just really it should be just above the leaves on there or where they're coming out. Right around here or below but for right now it's okay as long as the bottom's in contact so the soil doesn't dry out they'll be okay. They're not going to be hurt or anything so that's the main thing. I just want to make sure the water is deep enough to get into there. I'm going to move the fish out next week. I'll drain this down a little bit so I can like I said, make sure 50% of the water is from the existing pond and that'll be that. It's a new day and it is, oh, I, <laughs> there we go. Might help if I don't have the lens cap on. New day, beautiful outside, kind of chilly, but that's to be expected. The low tonight, they just changed it to 35, so that's good. That's better than 34, I suppose. I still can't do much out here right because the i can't what's the i can't plant things up when there's a frost advisory no reason to even do that when there are other chores to be done out here so uh, this is still looking gross but the water did warm up enough that the little chlorinator machine that turns the salt into chlorine uh, that was able to turn on so i dumped nearly 300 pounds of salt in here yesterday and uh, that's why the water kind of has like a sort of milky weird gross appearance to it because it's got to like turn that salt over it has to dissolve and everything but it actually is much more clear today than it was the day before but there's still just all these nasties and garbage blowing out of the birch trees and the maple up there it's just part of spring that's not a big deal it's i mean the skimmers pick it it's not I'm never gonna complain about cleaning the pool or pool maintenance. This is a luxury that would be dumb. But I do think it's fun to be able to like go through and be like, hey, look at how like it was filthy and then it's clean, you know, before and after thing. That didn't happen in this video because I, I mean, it's still dirty and I filmed <laughs> all of the other stuff in slow motion. Totally screwed that one up. Anyways, I think the last thing I really need to tackle for right now before I move my plants in, which I won't really bother filming moving the plants and that seems kind of boring. Uh, but this I, lace vine, heart vine, sweetheart, white heart, I can't remember. It's not an invasive, it's a native, but um, it is very aggressive and not really something I want over here. And I talked a little bit earlier, I don't remember if it was when I was filming in slow-mo or not, but getting this stuff out of here is difficult because the way the roots come up is in these chunks kind of like this so see the root didn't really even come up from this piece here there's still lots of roots left down there 
and that makes it so that it just puts up tons and tons more little vine babies, little vine monsters. So I'm gonna go through and get as many of these pulled out as I can and kind of clear the area. And then it should be easier to manage it as it starts to come back up and I'll spray it when that happens. I'm just using a 50% white vinegar with hot water and a little bit of soap to help it stick. And it works fairly well for burning out the foliage. It's fairly simple to do because you can see some of my little akubas coming up in there. I might be able to talk about those when you can actually see them. I don't know. I'm going to try and work on this for a little bit and see what I can do because it's very, very, very windy. And it's not forecasted to storm, but it definitely feels like it's going to. Wow, the sky's really pretty. But it's like sunny one minute and then very dark the next and very, very very breezy it's not as breezy right now i mean i'm not filming when it's windy you wouldn't be able to hear anything i'm saying so yeah back to work now one thing that i do enjoy about the blustery winds that we've been getting like every couple weeks it'll just be like crazy insane windy for a day i think oh wait i was weeding let me get back to that now, i was doing i did this and then i went and did some other things and my brain reset so that's what happened there so i got the bulk of everything out of here there's still little bitty bits of the plant in here but it's to a level where i will be able to control this much more easily when you get down to a certain level you just pull and pull and pull it's not all going to come up and then if you pull too much you're going to have a, a lot more coming up than would be desirable so it's down to a point where i can at least manage this with a an all-natural spray which i'll talk about here in a minute over here you see this akuba this is akuba japonica mr gold strike now i have had this akuba for an extremely long time see it over here and over there and over there this was originally one tall beautiful plant and it grew as a very nice shrub over here for many many years and then we started having some bad winters and what i thought was really interesting was that instead of dying this plant laid down you see that sometimes with cactus like the apuntias where if you have a really harsh winter you just you know they can, they're pretty cold tolerant a lot of apuntias but in some climates like an apuntia i'm growing is going to be much more low to the ground than say if i lived a zone higher it would stay upright all winter whereas for me it lays down and some of those will pop back up this akuba laid down and i've never really seen that in a, a shrub before at least not in the akubas not i really can't think of many others i can't think of anywhere i've seen it actually no so it laid down that was its defense mechanism it went nope too much too cold i'm going down to the ground and it went flat and it spread out like a octopus kind of like a big old you know you get it it was spread out so what was once a tall shrub went down and it has been growing like that for a few years and i've just been letting it because what happens here we can see over here is that by laying down the way it did it basically those parts that were in contact with the moist soil surface those took root and developed into new plants so this right here this whole plant was originally from that shrub over there and uh, when it laid down this is what ended up being left there so it was like a final would you focus please maybe a little bit i can't tell it's too sunny hopefully this is in focus it was kind of like a last attempt at life the plant went oh i might die time to lay down one i'll be safe on the ground not that you know the plants are necessarily cognizant by doing that it was also able to make sure that its branches its little nodes and everything had contact with the soil surface so that it could root out into more little plants i think that's pretty fascinating and uh, th these typically aren't plants for full full sun unless you live in the right climate for them uh, like the pacific northwest or really anywhere coastal you can usually get away with more sun than you can inland especially in hot climates but uh, they can if things are going right soils right and conditions are good they can take full sun it's gonna be pretty sunny over here now that the magnolia that's behind me is gone but it seems to be okay with that so far so for right now i'm going to leave them and then when it's time to redo this entire area here i'll probably dig them and move them somewhere else i gotta you know obviously i gotta finish up the weed killing and then the magnolia's gotta go that's a problem when it comes to re-landscaping this garden bed but hopefully that will get done soon i did manage to get in contact with a tree company today that's going to come out on monday and give a quote so fingers crossed that 
that can get done quickly because it would be nice to go ahead and finally i've been hoping to do this for a couple of years not necessarily get rid of the magnolia but to really kind of wipe this canvas clean so that i can freshen it up because over the years what was in here it was mostly plants for full sun and then the magnolia grew as well as the maples the oaks and all the other trees that surround the area so in the afternoon the sun is just a little bit behind these now and it didn't used to be like that so all those sun loving plants started to die off so it's time to go ahead and freshen things back off with plants that are gonna be more suited to having a little bit more shade I mean, now that the magnolia is gone they're gonna be getting a lot more sun so i look forward to finally having that taken care of so i can figure out this area here i had a plan and then i came up with another plan and then i came up with another plan you know daydreaming about stuff to do in the garden so that's you know will be fun when it's time to get to it i would like to are we gonna do this right now yeah let's do it i would like to have a crepe myrtle back here in this corner just be it would I, something evergreen would be great too but looking out this window in the kitchen it would just be so beautiful during the summer to have those big flowers from a crepe myrtle this spot is pretty well protected i mean the akuba there is zone seven i'm zone six they're doing okay back there i mean <laughs> i guess okay is kind of subjective but uh, it's the last surviving i'd originally planted four all the others died when we had a few bad winters and this one even though it laid down still ticking along and doing okay and there'll be sun back here for a crepe myrtle now that the magnolia is not there and i would choose a variety that doesn't get too big but i want one with a nice vase shape i just think that would be so pretty to look out that window and have those flowers with all the bees and butterflies and hummingbirds flying around it in the morning and afternoon that sounds fantastic but uh, evergreen would also be nice but uh, there's also a good chance that there will be an evergreen magnolia going in place of this one maybe you know i keep saying things are kind of up in the air with everything that's going on right now but that would be the ideal plan so working my way towards that by getting the japanese orange dug up and then you know all the cleanup and whatnot so i'll stay on top of making sure everything stays sprayed down with the, i mentioned the vinegar water soap solution that works well enough for me it just kind of burns the foliage off doesn't do much for the roots but as long as you keep the foliage down so the, eventually the roots run out of energy because there's nothing providing you know it's a whole cyclical process so it works just takes a few weeks there are lots of natural weed killers out there burnout is one i haven't tried burnout because it's last i looked into it which was like late last summer very expensive for citric acid and clove oil i i don't fully understand the price on that but maybe that's come down by now maybe it's just where i was looking i don't know i'll give the concentrate a try sometime this summer and see how that goes but if the the thing is the vinegar and water and soap works well but like i said doesn't do the roots maybe the burnout will work better for that i don't know uh, i also tried a product called natria which they kind of duped me <laughs> they have this beautiful green bottle it says natria on it which makes you think oh it's all natural and safe but then i looked at it and i was like this doesn't say all natural and safe anywhere on the packaging but they got me with the packaging and the name and i looked into it and what was in it it's more of a gentle alternative to more harsh products but there's still like some of the chemicals that were in it, it was kind of like things were sort of up in the air on the safety of what was in it so i still kind of have backed off of using that unless something's really really stubborn but for the most part just staying on top of that with the vinegar that that'll handle that just have to make sure i repeat the process oh the wind's snapping up my nanas that's okay they grow fast it's no big deal blows all the stuff out of the trees helps get the pollen out of the air especially next week when this cold snap is over it's supposed to warm up and after basically friday night it should be pretty safe to have most things out here they're saying it might get down to 40 on sunday but after that it looks like we're good here it's been a torturous year it's just that the weather has been so freaking weird but the nice thing though is that we've had enough warm days even though april was unseasonably chilly there were still several days that were very unseasonably warm and that kept things moving so even though it's been cool outside it, it's like this is how things usually look like late may to early june so things are still a few weeks ahead uh just not the tropicals and that's okay the natives and perennials they're happy that's more important than the you know having the palm trees and stuff everywhere they wait another week whatever that doesn't matter hey pumpkin how you doing sweetie 
She's been pestering me. I opened up a new package of cat treats yesterday, and ever since, just nonstop, nonstop on me to give her more treats. Pumpkin, would you turn around? Like, not everybody feels like we're going to cheer Pumpkin, Pumpkin. Yeah, she waits over there because her cookie jar is right over there by the window. And she's like, um, excuse me, where are my treats at? I came inside for a few minutes. It was, it's a beautiful day, but kind of chilly when it's windy and 55 degrees outside. I needed to warm up a little bit. The orange tree, I don't mind how that looks out this window either. I think I mentioned, maybe it was during slow-mo time, but putting it back there in that corner, that would be a pretty option too. Plenty of time to figure those things out. It's exciting. I like being able to do the planning process with everything. Also, I wasn't sure if Pumpkin had made it into the vlog. I know people like a little bit of key time. Pumpkin! you've been bouncing off the walls and I hit record and you're just going to go over there and hide? What's that about? What's going on there? Yeah, I got chilly. I'm starting to warm up though. I can go back out. And also, I mean, I could have put on pants, but I'm, you know, at home and leisuring and I just don't feel like it. So the last of the stuff that I need to get done today is going to take me a while and I don't plan on vlogging it because it just seems redundant, but I need to get the annuals and things all put together so I can put a frost cloth over them tonight. So things like the heliconia, see how their leaves are cupped? They're like, uh-uh. What's with this wind and this chill? They're not having it. Heliconias, gingers, the bromeliads, the fireballs are actually pretty cold tolerant, but it's like, it's one night, so why risk it all? Like, take care of things all winter long and then just let one night cause like even if it's just tip burn no reason to do that yeah the tender tender plants gingers heliconias those things they're going in everything else i'm going to cover up with a frost cloth and i'm not terribly concerned about this cold snap partially because it, the sun has been really strong the last few days the ground is nice and warm i was actually able to feel the heat coming up from the ground when i came out here this morning and that heat will dissipate throughout the night because when i look at like the hourly breakdown of everything we're looking at the ground right now that hourly breakdown is made it look like it's only going to be below 40 for a few hours and then like around 7 or 8 a.m when the sun starts to come around it's like going to shoot right back up into the 50s and then into the 60s so like i said i'm not like freaking out about this cold snap it shouldn't be that big of a deal these adenidia palms you know they were accidentally exposed to 34 degree temps a couple of times because the forecasts were just so incredibly wrong it's supposed to be in the 40s and it got much colder than that so that's the only part that i'm a little bit more concerned about is that the forecast could potentially be way off with 35 it could i mean who knows could drop to like 32 or something i don't know that would be really weird but it could happen so yeah i have to go through and gather things that are going to be more delicate things like the gluxinia over here that you can barely see the petunias i was hoping to get these planted up this week but the i they only sent four of the six of these petunias and it's going to go one two three so i need to get my hands on two more in order to make that work or i could just do one on each end and do like a silverberry or a different variety in the mix that could still look pretty yeah I'm flexible they're flowers it'll look pretty no matter what we do here to keep things nice and colorful i wonder how warm the water is in here oh oh that's nice it's gonna be steamy out here tonight and that's the other thing i'm gonna keep working on getting this pool clean because if it's going to get that cold that means there'll be a lot of steam and i love swimming in the steam but i uh, i'm not swimming in that it's got to be sanitary because i still have some stitches in my back from when i was supposed to have a procedure done on my shoulder then that got canceled you know for obvious reasons uh, but the stitches are still there because i can't you know can't go anywhere to get them removed so that's like things have to be clean or i could just keep my torso at this is you guys don't have to worry about that oh, oh hey look at this that's a surprise okay i don't know if y'all you know I, it could be hard to keep up with what goes on during the vlogs but i had mentioned a few weeks ago that maybe last week it could have been this week my brain is so confused between the losing half of this vlog and then filming two other videos that are unusable and it just like I think I mentioned before, it's really hard for me to keep track now of what I said in which video because all the slow-mo stuff, there's no audio. So I did go ahead and upload everything to the computer and like skim through it, but I, I don't remember what I said. Anyways, the Lotus, I was ready to toss this. I had talked about 
how I wasn't going to do these aquatic bowls uh, because like not really wanted the stagnant water around and stuff like that and that I was pretty sure I had killed this lotus. I thought this was dead because I really got excited and brought this out way too early and then we had those cold nights like I talked about you know just a minute ago with the adenidia palms but look I mean it's got new growth coming out of it so it's not dead. That is really exciting so I guess I will still be doing the aquatic planter over there by doing I mean, I'm gonna put this in that pot that's pretty much where that ends but I am really happy about that so when things warm up on Monday I'm gonna go ahead and maybe stick some fertilizer in here same thing with my water lilies and get those going that's cool I really thought this thing was a goner but no look at that that's fun I guess that means I have a water lily in here that's just been chilling I kind of like to get them going in more shallow pots I'll set that down so you have to listen to that. I like to throw them out in more shallow pots because the water warms up more quickly and they get more sun that way. And it's going. This is one of the ones from last year. I am missing two water lilies. I planted up four of these last year. And um, one of them's a tropical. It's in the garage. And then I have this one. And the other two, I just I, I can't find them. I have no idea where those went. The only thing I can figure, I should have read put new gravel on top of this. I still have time to do that, it's okay. Um, the only thing I can figure is that I had someone helping me with cleanup out here back in late winter, early spring, and uh, I thought that what I had done with those was I had flipped the pots and I had them over here and I'm thinking maybe they thought that they were dead plants, the person who was helping me, and maybe tossed them. The only thing I can figure, that I don't know, but hey, I still have this one at least, so that's good. And the lotus bowls, back in use. That's exciting. I'll just have to, I, well, I don't know what I'll do about the mosquito situation with that actually, but I'll figure something out. I'll try some new products. I'll keep using the mosquito dunks and granules and the other ones that I've been using, but when I talked about this before, whenever that video was, I, I just, they didn't do anything last year, but I can try. I can't put mosquito fish in there because it's just, it's too small. They'd get picked off like crazy by the wildlife and I don't think it'd be very nice to the mosquito fish. And that water gets extremely warm also because it's a shallow bowl. It just wouldn't really work out, but I can put them in the pond where the water lily was so that could help an awful lot. Yeah. Well, that's fun. That's good news. That made me happy. Oh yeah, and all this stuff that I potted up at the beginning of the video, that definitely has to go in. At the very least, those gingers here, the curcumas, they will not appreciate 35 degrees. It'll be a big setback. I have a few more bulbs to plant. Actually, not a few. I have a bunch of these Hilo Beauty elephant ears, which are one of my absolute favorites. They're so pretty. They stay small. I think they only get like three feet tall. At least they've never gotten any bigger than that for me before. And they just, they have the prettiest variegation on them. I, uh, they're not really a full sun elephant ear. I think it even says on here, it's part sun to part shade on there. And uh, I don't know if it's an alocasia or a colocasia. It's one of those ones that's sort of a mystery. Every time I read up on it, the information's all over the place on that one. So uh, it's just, it doesn't matter. They're pretty and that's all I care about. But the one thing that I was a little bit concerned about was on one of the packages, it had a sticker on it that said ruffled elephant ear. And there are a few different elephant ears that sometimes get called ruffled elephant ears. And I am often a little bit skeptical with these bagged roots bulbs sometimes because there have been so many occasions where I've ordered something or purchased it from the store and what grew was not at all what was in the picture or what it was labeled to be. It usually happens with cannas. I uh, sometimes would get like big bulbs of cannas from like Sam's Club. A few years ago they had the Pretorias, the you know the ones with the pretty stripes on them. They had those in big bags you get like 12 roots for like 15 bucks and that's a great deal. And not a single one of the cannas that came up were actually Pretorias. They were the Australias, the ones that have that deeper bronze foliage to them. And uh, those are very different in appearance. I was pretty upset. But then they had them again the next year. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. Maybe I'll get it right this time. Nope. Same thing, except it was just like a whole bunch of different cannas. And then the same thing happened when I got them from Walmart. It's just, so I get skeptical. And then uh, I planted up things at the beginning of this video here. Well, some of those roots were the Stuttgart, Stuttgart's of pretty variegated, just white and green cannas from um, Home Depot. I got a bunch of plants from Home Depot a few months ago, I did a video on it. And look at what's coming up in here. That's not a canna, not a canna at all. That looks to me more like a dahlia or something like that. What's that about? Yeah, so there were some of these mixed in with those 
supposed canna rhizomes. I don't know for sure, but uh, this is definitely not a canna. You can tell just from looking at the bulb there, and that makes me skeptical. So I guess it'll be a surprise as to what comes up. I don't like that though. Like, give people what they pay for. But there's another one back here that you can see coming up. I'm like, okay, that looks like a canna. I won't be able to say if it's the right canna until it actually flushes out its foliage. So that's fun. Not really something that we should have to deal with when you spend money on something though, right? Just put, go ahead and put the plant in the package that you put on the label. So hopefully that's not the case with these. I don't think it will be, but I don't know. Oh, these ferns, oh, they make me so happy this time of year. Look at them, they're so lush and happy and vibrant. Guys, yeah, I do have to wrap it up though. I have a lot of things I need to get done as far as I have to get all the plants gathered and covered and moved inside and everything. So I'm going to get on top of that. Everything should be okay. I'm not, like I said, it's gonna be cold, but very briefly and the ground's nice and warm. So I'm not too terribly concerned. We'll see what happens. Should be okay though. Oh, crepe myrtles are coming up. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, bye. Everybody's doing well. Everything's going okay for you. Sorry about my screw up and this vlog being even more weird than it normally would be. Maybe, I don't know, I haven't edited it yet. Everything might be fine. This, uh, all my talk about everything being confusing might be for nothing. And I know that this cold snap is affecting a lot of areas, so hopefully your gardens are okay. I know in Tennessee and Georgia and a lot of places, y'all are gonna get this cold too, so fingers crossed. The plants, sh they should be okay, it's except for like, you know, maybe you don't have things like this outside, that might be a bit much, but like, you know, the perennials and the cool loving annuals, I'll be fine. And because the weather's been so erratic, I'm not making plans for next week. I'm just going with the flow. I'm gonna see what my mood is, what the weather's like. Hopefully I'll be able to start getting the planters and things going out here and get some more mulch moved. I was really hoping to like really get all the mulch and everything, like raked back, cleared up, moved around, then kind of worked into the soil in certain areas, but it just, that doesn't make sense to do when it's gonna be cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I do that? There's no reason to, I might as well leave it there just for a couple more days, keep things sheltered, because it's all fresh growth. The gingers and everything, those got the mulch off of them, but everything else, I'm leaving for now, just to be safe. You guys know the whole YouTube drill. It's all down there. Makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel, and I appreciate it, so thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get started moving plants back in. I bet you'll never be able to guess how the vlog's gonna start next week, right? Probably with plants being moved back out. Oh, and the power. <laughs> not working. I'm unplug the lights that are in these because I'm still wondering if maybe that's the culprit. It's kind of a process of elimination here. Get those out and see if things start going again. Yep, that was the final update. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. Eh, hold up. So, uh, how much weight do we think these chandeliers can handle? What are your thoughts? Huh? 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 What are your thoughts, huh? I guess we're gonna find out.